Hello, my dear friends. Have you ever paused to consider the notion that our planet, with its swirling blue oceans, verdant forests, and teeming life, is more than just a complex ecosystem, but rather a living, breathing entity? What if Earth itself is a single organism, with each of us playing a part in its grand physiology? Today, let's embark on a philosophical journey to explore this captivating idea, the Gaia Hypothesis. Imagine, if you will, Earth as a majestic, interconnected system. From the smallest microbe in the soil to the great elephants roaming the savannas, each component works together in an exquisite balance, much like the organs within your own body. It's a perspective that encourages us to tread with both wonder and responsibility upon the ground beneath our feet. Now, what if I posed to you a question that was as open as the sky above? Could it be possible that Earth itself is alive? This question is not meant to stump you or lead you down a path of fantasy. Instead, it is here to ignite the flame of curiosity that I know each of you carries within your soul. It's an invitation to ponder, to explore, and to dream about the very nature of life as we know it. As we delve into the heart of the Gaia hypothesis, let us consider the symbiotic relationships that bind all living things. Much like the bees that dance from flower to flower, cross-pollinating as they go, or the trees that communicate and share nutrients through a subterranean fungal network, the Earth system too exhibits characteristics of self-regulation and interdependence. It's a concept that suggests our biosphere is a self-sustaining global ecosystem, a singular organism in its own right. The idea was first brought to light by scientist James Lovelock and co-developed with microbiologist Lynn Margulis in the 1970s. They propose that living organisms interact with their inorganic surroundings on Earth to form a synergistic and self-regulating complex system, one that helps to maintain and perpetuate the conditions for life on the planet. Margulis's expertise in symbiosis, the living together of unlike organisms, was a cornerstone of this hypothesis, illustrating that cooperation is as much a part of evolution as competition. To appreciate how history has grappled with such a philosophy, let us turn the pages back to ancient civilizations. The Greeks spoke of Gaia, the primal Mother Earth goddess, a deity that personified the Earth and its life force. This mythological reverence speaks to an intuitive understanding that the Earth is more than just a stage upon which life performs. It is a participant, a catalyst, and perhaps even a creator of life itself. Moving through history, the Gaia hypothesis can be seen mirrored in the reverence for nature held by many indigenous cultures. Their understanding of the land as a living, sacred entity echoes the sentiments of Lovelock and Margulis, though articulated through spiritual and ancestral wisdom rather than scientific inquiry. Now, let us consider the weight of our decisions and actions upon this living entity. The ethical implications of the Gaia hypothesis are profound, for if the Earth is indeed a singular organism, then the impact of deforestation, pollution, and climate change is akin to causing harm to a body that we are all part of. The ethical dilemma then becomes not one of resource management, but one of planetary well-being, where the consequence of harm is shared by all life. It is in the reflection upon our cultural artifacts that we can see the Gaia hypothesis echoed in the arts. Take Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where the creation of life and the responsibility it entails is a central theme. Or consider the melodies of composers who have drawn inspiration from the natural world, attempting to capture the essence of Earth's majesty in symphony and song. Each work is a testament to the innate connection between humanity and the Earth, a relationship as old as time itself. In our contemporary discourse, the Gaia hypothesis remains a hotbed for debate. Some scientists criticize it for not being strictly testable, while others see it as a powerful framework that can guide our approach to climate change and environmental preservation. What do you think? Can viewing Earth as a living organism change the way we interact with our environment? 
The significance of the Gaia hypothesis in today's world cannot be overstated. It urges us to rethink our place within the biosphere, to recognize our role in the planet's health, and to take action towards nurturing the only home we've ever known. The implications extend into the future, challenging us to envision a world where harmony with Gaia is not just an ideal, but a reality. As we bring together the threads of this exploration, let us consider a final thought. Perhaps Earth is more than just a home. Maybe in its vast and mysterious ways, it is a kind of kin, a family of interconnected life, with each member contributing to the well-being of the whole. Could it be that by caring for Earth, we are in essence caring for ourselves? I want to express my deepest gratitude for joining me on this philosophical voyage. Your willingness to ponder such profound concepts is the very heartbeat of meaningful discourse. I encourage you to continue reflecting on the ideas we've shared, to discuss them among friends, and to ask yourself what role you wish to play in the story of our planet. And with that, my friends, I bid you a warm farewell. May your days be filled with curiosity, your actions with purpose, and your heart with the love of the living earth. Remember, every step you take is upon the skin of Gaia, and every breath you take is a part of her own breath. Until next time, keep your eyes on the stars and your feet gently on the ground.